We have uh, heard about Luke and the prodigal son, the lost sheep, the silver coin. We've heard it all before. But there are still hidden secrets in there that maybe we've never touched upon. So let's take a look in there. All right? God continues to reveal himself to us. He continues to reveal himself to us. Uh, he, he, we're not stagnant. We're not stuck. We are progressing. Progressing. We're progressing forward. Always going forward from faith to faith and glory to glory. As God. See, see don't get it confused. It's not as you build upon your most holy faith, because you're not holy to begin with until God says so. He's the one that sanctifies you and sets you apart for his use. You don't know where to start. That's the first thing. And we bless him for it. And we thank him for it. I, I, I mean that he would be so mindful of dust. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. He never forgets that we are dust. But even being dust, to show you how wonderful and mighty this God we serve is, dust is the crown. This dust is the crown of his creation. This dust has dominion over everything that creepeth and crawleth in the earth, whether it flies, whether it swims. This dust, this dust has Dominion, And I like that. What is man that thou art so mindful of him, or the son of man that you visit him? Oh, he's the crown. He's the crown of God's creation. Nothing like us. Nothing like us. And we give him praise. We give him honor. We give him glory as he continues to reveal himself in us. Oh, thank you, Jesus. You see... God has always been able to speak through the ages to anyone he wants to, and the distance makes no difference. Now look at what he's done for us, how he's brought us into a knowledge. We're not plugged into no wall. We don't have to be at home. We don't got to go to no phone booths. Not only can we communicate, you know, the telephone, to anyone, anywhere, anywhere in the world, but we can see them now. God, nothing new for God. It's new for us. But God in his heavenly host always were there. No, no for a surety that God is taking us from faith to faith and glory to glory as he builds. He's continuing to reveal himself to us. In our Sunday school lesson, it used to be hard to believe that a virgin could become pregnant, never knowing a man. People would just, uh, never could be. Now today, God has given the knowledge to man. That's right. That's right. It's called artificial insemination. Uh, you, a woman never has to know a man to have a child. God revealing himself as he's continuing to reveal himself to us. We know the story about the prodigal son. Maybe something we didn't think about because we know he asked for his fortune. He went out and he wasted it. And he, he, he came to himself. That's what the word says. He came to himself. But he, he, if you think about it, the only reason he came to himself, he came to himself as a result of, the, of a deposit that was made within him. Uh-huh. The Word of God says that God drawed us with loving kindness. What did he think about? You know, his father is, is a representative of God. So what, what made him think about going home? What made him even think, think about his father? The love that not that his father had for him, because he knew he had plenty of it. The love that his father had for his servant. Yes, thank you, Jesus. How much more 
does our God love us? See, 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 I mean, see this picture and see it clearly. Born in sin, shaping in iniquity, and in sin did our mother conceive us. Hearts dreadfully wicked, and still God loves us. A son, a son that wanted his inheritance now. And in the Jewish custom, it actually said, when he asked his father for his inheritance, he actually said to his father, I wish you were dead. Thank you, Jesus. Look at all the different nuances that are taking place now. He's back home. Father and ran to the old older men at that time didn't run. He didn't ran to his son. I heard it said that if you make one step towards God, he'll make the rest towards you. Of course he put the he put the step in you to begin with. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. So we we need to put everything in perspective. All right? What I want to talk to you today about, though, is the elder brother. Now, we have to remember, first of all, I told you that the father was a representation of God. Now, when the son asked for his inheritance... Uh, I, I mean, how would you feel about your children telling you, in essence, they wish you were dead? Hey, give me my money now. I don't want to wait for you to die. This father did exactly what his child asked without. Because it wasn't about the inheritance. It was about the son. He knew he had trained him up and, and the way he should go. All right? But he knows, just like some godly men and women know today, that sometimes these children of ours, they just got to go through. They got to hit it and see it. For now, some of them will listen, but not all of them. You might just have two. One listen, the other didn't. You might have four or five. Three or four of them listen. One or two of them don't. But they're all getting the same food. They're getting the same, they're getting the same love. So it has to be something inherent within the child. The Word of God says, God will have mercy on whom he will have mercy. And whom he will, he hardens. Now, he doesn't have to harden you for all eternity. He, he can harden you for a season. What's the picture, that, what's the picture that, we, that we have? The Apostle Paul. He said he crucified the church beyond measure. He also wrote more books for us to read in the Bible than anyone. He's the one that will tell you, when it pleased God, who separated me from my mother's womb, to reveal Christ in me. In other words, he had a revelation. God spoke to the very core of his being and said, no, no, you didn't go find this out from no man, no woman, no boy, no, no scholar, no nothing. I reveal this to you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We hear Jesus now in this whole discord in the 15th chapter. He's really been communicating with the scribes. In parables, though, what did he say about parables? For one thing, our, our Pastor Anderson has told us, watch. Watch the parable. It ain't what you think it is. Watch the parable. All right? And this is the same thing here. We hear about the lost sheep. We hear about the lost coin. And we hear about the prodigal son appearing to be lost. But what is it? What is it that can be lost? Since this father, since these people are, are all symbols of God and his chosen, his sons. That's what they're symbolic of. But not only that. They ought to let the scribes and Sadducees know that their self-righteousness is not what it's about. Their salvation by works is not what it's about. It's strictly about God. Jesus has sent his attention on the publicans and the sinners, pictured in the story of the prodigal son. Jesus continues the story and introduces the elder brother, who is a clear illustration of the scribes and the Pharisees. 
the publicans and the sinners were guilty of obvious sins, of obvious sins of the flesh. But the Pharisees and the scribes were guilty of sins of the spirit. See, they were holding the truth, the word of truth, in unrighteousness. See, they knew for a fact that the weights and the things that they were having people to do, they couldn't bear them themselves. They were pointing out their shortcomings for things that they were short in themselves. They knew it. They knew it. And in 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1, this is what it says about them. Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness. Who can do that? No one but the Christ that lives within you. Let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and of the spirit perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Nothing but God. Nothing but God can do that work in anyone. <clears throat> Thank you, Jesus. Their outward actions, the scribes and the Pharisees, their outward actions may have been blameless, but their inward attitudes were abominable. They were terrible. Yes. They were prejudiced thought they were better than everybody. And they knew that it wasn't by works of righteousness what they had done. They knew that they fell short. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, that's what they were. Yes, hypocrites. Thank you, Jesus. Full of iniquity. That's what the Word says about them. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. For you make clean the outside of the cup and of the platter, but within they are full of extortion and excess. You blind Pharisees, clean first that which is within the cup and platter, that the outside then may be clean also. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you are likened unto a white sepulchre, which indeed appears beautiful outwardly, but are within full of dead men's bones and of all uncleanness. Even so, you also outwardly appear righteous unto man, but within you are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Remember, we're talking about the way that he appears the message that he's giving to them in parables. In parables. In parables of this elder son. Look at the elder son. Luke 15 and 29. And he answering said to his father, Lo, these many years do I serve thee. Does he serve him for not? He lived good. He lived good. He, had, he was getting his reward while he was living and going to get even a greater reward when his father passed. All right, because after all, he's the elder brother. He gets a double portion, you know. He gets a double portion. And he's staying with the father while the portions continue to grow. The younger brother's left. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Neither have I transgressed at any time your commandments, and yet you never gave me a kid that's a young goat, that I might make merry with my friends. So the things he did were not done just because they were the right thing to do or just because he loved his father, but for the purpose of making a reputation for himself. You see, if he loved his father and knew that his father loved him, what problem would he have had at any time that he wanted to give a party? Any time he wanted to have a feast. His father had plenty. He seen his father give his younger brother his portion of the inheritance. What would a festival do? 
but he's never thinking on those terms until his younger brother appears. So he's covet he's covetous of even what his younger brother has. That doesn't even make sense. That does not make sense. It shows the lack of his concern for his younger brother. His contempt. He is now accusing him instead of instead of having that spirit of reconciliation. Instead of loving him and being glad to see him. Because his brother could be literally dead. Literally dead. Yes, and I'll use that. Thank you, my brother. That's apparently what he wanted, huh? He wished his brother was dead. Thank you, Jesus. He looked, he looks like now. This elder son looks like a good son and a solid citizen. And compared to his younger brother, he may even, to some, look like almost a saint. It is very important. It is very important. I don't want to take anything from the good things that God had caused him to do. For obedience is better than a sacrifice to hearken then of the fat of rams. So therefore, it is very important to be obedient and diligent in all your responsibilities. But they are not the only test of your character. And believe me, and believe me, the trying of your faith will reveal your character. Jesus taught that there were two great commandments. The two greatest commandments are to love God and to love your neighbor. Or to love others, just in case you don't know who your neighbor is. All right. Luke 10, 25 through 28 says, And behold, a certain lawyer stood and tempted Jesus, saying, Master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And he said unto him, What is written in the law? How readeth thou? And he answered and said, Thou shalt love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. Jesus replied and said, You have answered right. Do this, and you shall live. Of course, Jesus knows. He knows that you can only do that under the power that he has given you. If he don't dwell in you richly, if the Holy Spirit does not abide with you, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That is an uncalculating love. That's a love that loves no matter what you're going through, no matter what your trials, no matter what your tribulations. You love God and trust in him. No matter what, you might be sleeping on a free, a free way. He's still your God. You still trust him. And you don't think too highly of yourself if you're living in palaces. He still gets the glory. He still gets the honor. Thank you, Jesus. But we see the elder brother broke both of these divine commandments. He did not love God, represented in the story by his father, and he did not love his brother, represented as his neighbor. The elder brother would not forgive his brother who wasted his part of the family inheritance and maybe even disgrace the family name. But neither would he forgive his father who had generously forgiven his young son all these very sins. When you examine the sins of the elder brother, you can easily understand why he pictured the scribes and the Pharisees. To begin with, he is self-righteous. Self-righteous. He has that, behold me. Behold me. That's the older brother, the elder brother. Look at what I've done. You know, you know what the Word of God says about the children of God that, that claim to be, and they're perpetrators, by the way. 
what Jesus says about them in the last day? He says that they will come to me. But not all that come to me are mine. He says, Lord, Lord, have we not, have I not built great cathedrals in your name? Have I not fed the poor? Thank you, Jesus. Have I not laid hands on the sick and they recover? Have I not raised the dead? Jesus will say, Depart from me. Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. Again, you see, salvation is not by works of righteousness which you shall die. It's about a heart condition. It's about a heart condition. And it's a heart condition that only can be given to you by God. He'll take the stony heart out of your chest and give you a heart of flesh. He openly announced and accused his brother's sins of him. But he could not see his own sins. He became, even in all his riches, because you know he was rich, the father will tell him, all that I have is yours. The younger brother's taken his portion. And even if he waited till his father died, he still only got a third because the elder brother gets a double portion just for being the first. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. He could not even see his own sins. Luke 18, 9 through 14 says, And he spake this parable, this parable, unto certain which trusted in themselves. Did you hear that? I know people teach you, have taught you to have confidence in yourself for your own salvation. Watch that. They've told you that you can, you can earn your salvation. They tell you as a result of your works is how come your prayers are answered. Thank you, Jesus. They tell you as a result of you praying in your works is how come you're blessed. I thought every breath I take is a blessing. Every move I make is a blessing. Thank you, Jesus. And in that case, he's blessing the saints and the sinners, isn't he? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And he spake this parable unto certain which trusted in themselves that they were righteous and despised others. Self-righteous is what we can say because they think they are better than another. Be careful looking at someone else and thinking that you're better than they are. The truth of the matter is there, but for the grace of God goes you. Thank you, Jesus. Two men went up into the temple to pray, the one a Pharisee and the other a publican. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself, God, I thank thee that I am not as other men are extortioners, unjust, adulterers, and even as this publican. The publican. <clears throat> thank you. I fast twice in a week. I give tithes of all that I possess. Then the publican, standing afar off, would not even lift up so much as his eyes unto heaven, but smote his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Knowing and realizing who he is, realizing his own shortcomings, looking to and trusting in the mercy of God. I tell you, this is what Jesus says. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. And we're talking about the publican now. Not the one that was braggadocious about who he was, but the publican. For everyone that exalts himself shall be abased, 
and he that humbles himself shall be exalted. The Pharisees, they, they define sin primarily in terms of outward actions. Isn't that the way most of us do? We define sin as an outward action, not knowing that it's a condition of your heart. A condition of your heart. A sin sickness trapped in the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life. Your heart being dreadfully wicked. You hear me saying this often because I want to drive it home. You hear me say often, just do not think more highly of yourself than you ought to. But soberly, for God has given, not you. You don't know where to get it at. You can't get it. You can't get faith in in God in and of yourself because the word of God says that which was carnal first, and not that which was spiritual. This word is spiritually discerned. It's not carnal. We walk in the Spirit. So walk in the Spirit, I must understand spiritual things. And that's the only way that we don't fulfill the lust of the flesh. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. See, they completely miss the whole message of the Sermon on the Mount and its emphasis on the inward attitude and the holiness of the heart. And they were always looking looking to accuse Jesus just as the elder brother is accusing his younger brother. I asked the question, where is his love? Where is his love for his brother? Can I ask the same of you? Are you fault finders? Accusers? From this day forward, please, Please be aware of what comes out your mouth. Life and death is in the power of your tongue. Speak life. God says you are the light of the world. You are the salt of the earth. You are the love of God in this world. Drawing the children back to the Father. Not aligning yourself with the accuser. The accuser, an accusing spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Did you see that? You reap what you sow. Did you see it? You reap what you sow. You're not showing mercy, but you're crying when you're not receiving it. What's your problem? And see what? Let me tell you something. If you're his, you are receiving it. That don't mean you ain't getting your behind toe up, though. Because God chastens all sons. And if he chastens you not, then you be that B word. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. You be none of his. Uh huh. But all sons, all sons must go through. Pride was another way of his failings. Just think, he had served his father all these years and had never disobeyed his will. What a testimony. But his heart was not in his word. And maybe he was always dreamy of throwing a big party at which he and his friends could enjoy themselves. The elder brother, though, did not. He did. The elder brother did not. Did not. It, ooh, wait. Thank you, Jesus. The elder brother did not even conceive before his brother got there the thought. For he wanted to impress his father 
with his good works. When he could never earn his inheritance, it already belonged to him. But he's so busy trying to earn it, he doesn't realize it's already his. It was shown to him in his younger brother. And he couldn't see it. He was blind and didn't know it. Ephesians 6, 6 and 8 says, Not with eye service. And that's what he was giving. Not with eye service, as man pleases, but as the servant of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart. Be sure that that's why you're giving, why you're helping, not for a good reputation and not to be seen, but from the love of God which he's placed within you. See, you're being, you're being different from your elder brother, Christ Jesus. He, he could have made a wonderful reputation for himself, and he did, but it wasn't as a result of something that he was had to work at. Just the love that he showed towards us was as great as an example as we could ever, ever receive. And guess what? The love that he has placed in you and I for each other that will make you a greater reputation than you could ever ask for. See, I'm going to tell you something. When he says to feed those who, who misuse you despitefully, feed your enemy. If they, if they need water, give them water to drink. For in this you heap coals of fire on their head. Some people say, ooh, yeah, I like that because I'm burning them up. But that's not what it's doing. See, again, you heard a parable, and you took it naturally and it's spiritually. It, 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 it's a spiritual connotation. It's what it actually does. See, it's awful hard for somebody to keep loving on your dirty behind your low down behind, your lying, manipulating behind, and you not get the message. You will begin to love your own self. All you can see, no matter how dirty you are, how rotten and stinking you are, this person's still in your corner. That's the picture of Christ. That's it. And we say, greater is he that is within me. Well then, manifest it. Yeah. Oh, it's there. It's there for you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Ah. With, with good will, doing services as unto the Lord and not unto men. Let it be understood that the things that you do, are not unto men, but unto the Lord. For your Father reigns on the just and the unjust. Why shouldn't you? Knowing that whatsoever good thing any man doeth, the same shall he receive of the Lord, whether he be bond or free. Thank you, Jesus. We can't deny, we cannot deny that the elder brother was a hard worker and a faithful worker qualities to be commended but his work was not a labor of love that would please his father you cannot help but notice his unconcern for his missing brother imagine having been told that his brother had come home the father watched for the younger son day after day and finally saw him afar off See, God knows that all those that are his will come to him. Uh-huh. For none is lost. No, not one. But the elder brother could care less. 
hard hearted hard hearted and accuser when the brother shows up even though he knew it would make his father happy think about that he knew that it would make his father happy the elder brother did not want his younger brother to come home why should he share his estate with somebody who had wasted his own inheritance why should he even share his father's love with somebody who had brought shame to the family reports of the prodigal son's lifestyle only made the elder brother look good and perhaps in his mind would even make the father love him but the more no doubt about it the arrival of the younger brother was a threat was a threat to the younger to the older excuse me oh my god the time has gotten away from me in summing this up we are to walk in love period period the only one in this story that ends up un unhappy is the elder son because he's walking in condemnation for another he's not walking in love take your condemnation shoes off you don't want them you don't want nobody walking to you in them don't walk towards nobody else in them 